The question is, let the motion be agreed to. I call the Honourable Member Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, it's a pleasure to rise and speak to the summary offences position of handheld lasers amendment bill in the name of uh, Dr Cam Calder. Uh, and what to put on the record to start with, that uh, Labor will support this bill. To select committee, there are several reservations that we have with this legislation that we would think would need to be tidied up at select committee. But we, but we do congratulate the member on pursuing uh, a worthy subject. There have been, as I think the member probably pointed out in his speech, over 100 incidents of laser strikes against aircraft in the last year. Uh, there have been um, a handful of convictions uh, related to that, and I think that's important uh, to acknowledge that this bill does not make it an offence to, um, to perform one of these laser strikes against uh, an aircraft. That is already an offence. And recently a young man uh, was sentenced to four and a half months home detention, uh, having been um, caught and convicted of, um, uh, of uh, carrying out a laser strike against a landing aircraft. What this bill seeks to do, and, and, and it's, it's a, as I said, it's a worthy cause, what this bill seeks to do is to reduce the likelihood that uh, people will be able to have um, lasers and use them um, in, in an inappropriate way, such as a laser strike against an aircraft, or indeed, as the, as the member raised, uh, you know, a, a strike against a land you know, motor vehicle, um, a truck. I think the member used the example of a, of a fuel tanker. That would be probably the, um, the most disastrous uh, possible outcome, but indeed, um, I know a number of airline pilots have said really it's only a matter of time before somebody tries this against a moving vehicle uh, and the consequences of that could indeed be quite disastrous. Uh, so what this, what this bill um, does is make it uh, a, an offence liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding three months or a fine not exceeding $2,000 uh, for anybody who in a public place without reasonable excuse, which is an interesting phrase that I'm sure is open to interpretation, has any handheld laser in his or her possession. Now, sir, um, we think this bill is probably a bit too broad. This is um, going a little bit uh, too far into the realms of nanny state uh, from uh, the national members to support a bill that would ban the possession of all lasers in a public place without um, some reasonable excuse. And in fact, it actually goes much further than the government themselves have indicated uh, comfortable with, with the regulations that they recently brought in, um, as announced by the Associate Health Minister, Joe Goodhue, uh, regulations um, that can be made under the health and customs uh, legislation uh, to regulate the importation and, uh, and possession of lasers. And they've done what the government did, what the minister announced, uh, was exactly what the airline pilots uh, have been calling for, which is tighter regulations on the most powerful lasers. Uh, and in fact, the controls that the government has introduced will be applied to uh, handheld laser pointers with a power output greater. Uh, than one mill milliwatt, I, I assume it is, um, probably not a megawatt, in line with the approach taken in Australia and with recommendations uh, from the World Health Organisation. The new uh, restrictions will not cover lower powered laser pointers used as presentation aids or those used with survey equipment uh, or rifle sites. And that, to me, seems to be the sensible balance that needs to be achieved. And without um, a change that better reflects the, the, the government's approach to those regulations in this legislation, Labor would find it difficult to um, support, in, support this bill past select committee, uh, but I believe that the, the member would be um, open to some uh, debate and conversation around how we can better target this legislation at the lasers that actually cause harm and not inflict unnecessary regulation on people who uh, have these lower-powered lasers for perfectly legitimate reasons. Um, there, are, I, there are very few uh, um, 
occasions to have the higher powered lasers in a public place. I know that some astronomers uh, use them and it's certainly astronomy teachers uh, use them to actually point out constellations in the sky for, um, uh, for young children who are learning about the night sky. Uh, and I'm sure there'd be other um, reasons related to survey equipment, uh, etc., uh, that, that it would be reasonable to have the higher powered lasers. But so many people um, would carry around a little pen laser pointer uh, that is not capable of, um, of creating the havoc that the, uh, that the member in charge of this bill is concerned about. Uh, and, and as is always the case with this kind of regulation, it is about getting the balance right. We want to reduce the harm, we want to reduce the likelihood that people will be able to carry out these laser strikes, but we don't want to unnecessarily uh, burden uh, people um, who have the lower powered lasers for perfectly legitimate reasons. So um, it's a bit of a surprise that um, a national member would support uh, such a draconian approach, uh, but, um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that sorted out at the select committee. I can see, I can see some of the national gentlemen who are on the committee uh, who, are, who are looking forward to um, uh, fixing that bill up, I'm quite sure. Um, Mr. Mr Speaker, it is, it is a bit unfortunate, I think, that the government has been so slow to respond to this issue. It wasn't until May this year that Joe Goodhue announced the regulations uh, that, that will come into effect. They have not yet come into effect and they're anticipated, uh, it is anticipated that those regulations will um, come into effect towards the end of this year. Uh, and they've left it to a member's bill, they've left it to a backbencher, with all due respect to Cam Calder, to promote this legislation, left it at the mercy of the ballot, uh, left it at the mercy of the, um, the member's orders, which you know, we know that it takes an awfully long time for a member's bill uh, to rise to the top of the order paper and, and get its first reading debate. I would have thought that this government would have taken the safety of airline pilots, of passengers on aircraft, and indeed road users much more seriously and would have promoted uh, this type of legislation much sooner than they have. There was a dramatic increase in the incidence of these laser strikes from only a handful in 2006 to over a hundred in the last year. The evidence was clear that this was a growing problem. The airline pilots came and spoke to, to us in the opposition, and I know that they spoke to government members. They didn't kind of do a big public rah-rah campaign. They came and spoke to us very reasonably and asked the government to promote legislation that would increase their safety, and yet the government sat on their hands. They sat on their hands until May this year to announce regulations, regulations that have not yet come in force, and the, and the supporting legislation the supporting legislation that Cam Calder is, is promoting has only come to the House because a backbench MP decided to put this bill in the ballot. He was lucky enough to have it come out, very lucky to have it come out, and then it's finally made it to the House tonight in September. So, you know, I, I think that tells you a little something about this national government's approach to safety, particularly I'm sorry transport to interrupt safety. The Honourable so. Member. Honourable Members, the time has come for me to leave the Chair. This debate is interrupted and set down for resumption next sitting day. The People's House stands adjourned until 2pm tomorrow, Thursday the 5th of September. Hari rā, kākatiāna, kākatiāno, pō good night.